Broadway cash crisis. Work on my Venezuela once again. Thanks. They removed the one that they called monetary Hey there, hope all is well. Back at you today with some more RT News updates. And so someone actually made a comment on uh, the LIBOR situation and its interconnectedness with this repo situation that's recently unfolded as of last month with the Federal Reserve needing to come in and provide liquidity. And so as we all know, or may not know, uh, up until 2022, it looks like, or the end of 2021, LIBOR is expected to end. And so that's the overnight lending rate that's set by banks. And so as you can see over my shoulder here, this is an example of all the banks that have been connected and establishing a price of, for lending purposes on a daily basis. So the program itself came into effect in the 1960s and has been the measuring standard for all contracts and services provided in the financial inst industry as well as the banking sector. And as of the last great financial crisis, due to all the fraudulent activity amongst the banks themselves, there was a lot of rigging of markets or whatnot, or rigging of rates, which led to some jail time and a lot of exposure to the corruption in the banking sector. And so as a result of that, a lot of banks have decided to pull away from uh, setting their overnight lending rates and sharing amongst each other. So it looks like the world is separating in regards to how they measure the rates uh, to, to lend overnight. So it looks like every single country is coming up with their own method of securing interest rates for banks to borrow overnight as of now secure overnight financial rates uh the sofer is what the us is using and over the last couple of months more banks have been looking to uh, use that as a benchmark for rates uh given overnight but something is happening in the banking system to where we're starting to see that banks aren't trusting each other they haven't been as eager to lend to one another and so who has stepped in the entity of first and last resort, which happens to be the Federal Reserve Bank, with those astronomical amounts of billions of dollars per day, as well as their 14-day lending window, of them actually looking to provide liquidity for the banks overnight. And so I believe that this is all tied into the fact that things are slowing down. There's mid there's less trust, there's less trust in the current there's less trust in the current operations of the banking sector and all central banks are responsible for making sure they take care of their commercial banks. And so I believe we're witnessing that now. So I have about five or six articles. I'm going to try to thumb through them as fast as I can because they're very lengthy. But I happen to pull some key things out that I want to share and let you guys dig deeper for yourself. Recession. Recession. Recession will be. Will be a recession. We're going to hit a recession. The date of the next recession. A, a U.S. only recession typically lasts eight to ten months. A, a crash is coming now, whether it's six months from now, 12 months, 36 months, no one knows. If, if you have the right plan to set up, uh, you can you can make a lot of money from this. So here's an article here from Reuters that came out, uh, looks like a couple days ago. It says the end of LIBOR, the biggest bank challenge you've never heard of. And it gives you a little bit of history here and it's based upon some stories out of the UK, but it's real applicable to what's going on. And give you an idea, it says the slow progress highlights the challenge banks and borrowers are faced as regulators attempt to end the use of LIBOR, a benchmark embedded in as much as 340 trillion financial contracts worldwide from home loans to complicated derivatives. Oh, derivatives, bad word. So it looks like over in Britain, they're using something called Sonia, which is the Sterling Overnight Index Average. It's based on the average of interest rates banks pay to borrow sterling from one another outside of market hours and is published at 9 a.m. locally. Overnight Sonia rate based on actual transaction is seen as more of a robust and less vulnerable to the kind of manipulation that affected LIBOR, which was based on rates submitted by banks. Says the LIBOR rigging scandal saw billions of dollars in fines levied on major banks and jail sentences for traders convicted of manipulating the benchmark for profit. Says cost and consequences, but the reluctance of corporate borrowers to buy into Sonya is not only the reason for the slow progress, says banks face large costs for adapting systems and educating thousands of relationship managers on the merits of Sonya over LIBOR. And so it says 14 of the world's top banks expect to spend more than $1.2 billion on the LIBOR transition, with the cost for the finance industry as a whole set to be several multiples of that sum. 
Next article here says the global benchmark replacing LIBOR. This article here, it gives you actually some of the leading nations and what they're looking to implement before this LIBOR situation unravels completely. So in the United States, we have the secured overnight financing rate. It says launched in the mid 2018 trading in derivatives such as futures and swaps has grown steadily and more than 236 billion notional in cash instruments has been issued says some of the problems issuance of so far notes is mainly by state link entities and financial institutions the market is still awaiting a forward-looking term rate as opposed to one fixed overnight such as the one they have now so it looks like as of now because this is only one years old here in the u.s this is factoring into the problems that they're having and not trusting each other because that this is as of now just the overnight rate they don't have anything long term which mimics what LIBOR offered as far as the different terms for uh, the rates that they were set. So in Europe, they have the Euro short-term rate. In Britain, they got the Sterling Overnight Index Average. In Switzerland, they have the Swiss Average Overnight. And in Japan, it says the Tokyo Overnight Average Rate. And so one of the problems with Tokyo, or Japan rather, it says persistent negative interest rates in Japan make it hard to develop forward-looking rates. So because they're already in negative territory, it's kind of hard to set something when it's already below zero. Next article here is from Stuff. It says, after bankers rig the LIBOR, the end of the world's most important number is nine. And so scroll down here, it gives you more insight into the corruption that took place, which led to the dismembering of the LIBOR agreement in general. And it gives a little information as to some of the history of all the people that went to jail and things of that nature and all the fraud that was committed. And then it goes on to talk more about the overnight lending rates here in the United States of America, which then brings me to this next article. It says, LIBOR countdown, navigating the transition. So right now, over the last year, the transition out of the LIBOR exchange rates mechanism into this new one is what's causing a lot of concerns because along with setting these rates, the Federal Reserve or central banks around the world are dropping rates, which makes it kind of difficult to set some interest rates when you have central banks that's looking to get ahead of the next recession by dropping rates preemptively therefore causing hiccups, which I'm assuming plays into the mistrust or lack of trust amongst the banks themselves because central banks are dropping rates, making it very difficult for commercial banks to remain profitable. But if you thumb through some of here, it gives you some of the key points worth mentioning. And so it says six key developments in the LIBOR and overnight risk transition for the United States of America. Next one, coupon rate averaging. So if you've been following it so far since it was launched in 2018, you'll notice that it's a bit more volatile than the three-month LIBOR. It tends to experience swings at quarter end as large institutions seek funding to clean up their balance sheets. So this right here kind of lets you know what is currently underway now. And because it's not quite set yet, it's not clearly defined, there are swings in volatility and setting rates. And so that's why we had this recent September spike, amongst other things, I'm sure. But yet, that recent spike there is what has triggered this whole repo intervention by the Federal Reserve, which has basically started up their need to begin easing a lot sooner than they put it probably would have imagined. And so now this whole repo situation of them purchasing treasuries and providing liquidity, it kind of puts all this in a, in, a, in a tight bind because this wasn't a part of the Federal Reserve's plans initially. They were hoping probably for a smoother transition LIBOR to the SOFR, but it looks like that might not be the case. They are now involved directly by intervening. So it sounds like it's definitely thwarting the plans of the central bankers. Scroll down more. It says standardized fallback language. And so this talks about the idea that in within those contracts, everything is worded according to LIBOR and how all that functions. But yet with LIBOR coming to an end, they need to change the verbiage of these contracts, mortgages and things of that nature to reflect a necessary change with these new rates uh, that's being established through these new mechanisms. So then we got term rates are coming. And so they need some ways of measuring the borrowing costs long term amongst these uh, overnight exchanges providing longer time frames and it says here it looks like 30 uh, or 90 days for example will be ideal and the very one which i find to be the most interesting it says a zero percent floor is likely and so as central banks lower rates the danger amongst the commercial banks themselves is central banks interest rates going below zero into negative territory which will really prove to be a problem for the commercial banking because that kind of hinders their ability to be profitable. And so here it says, while we don't anticipate below zero rates coming to the U.S. anytime soon, we can't ignore the negative interest rates uh, are abroad. It says the ARRC has recommended a floor of 0% coupon rates. In other words, if SOFR were to dip below zero 
floating rate coupons reference reference to sulfur will likely be floored at zero so they're saying when it comes to lending amongst all these banks here they can't go below zero therefore all the contracts that people take out these rates here helped establish they can't go below zero so so at the end of the day it looks like confusion in the banking sector and so i'd imagine with the transition out of libor into each developing nation setting their own banking inter exchange rates uh, for themselves is a part of the confusion and my guess would be that this has definitely sped up and caused problems in the central banking realm because unfortunately rates are dropping automatically because they have to keep this narrative going of an economic expansion and the only way you can do that is to continue to borrow and to create funny money to prop the system up but they never probably took into effect the, the commercial banks that are dependent upon lower interest rates for themselves while being able to issue loans at a much higher rate all that's coming to a head at this current moment and so not only are the federal reserve back into the easing business but yet it's going to be something permanent which definitely will cause more mistrust amongst banks because once again as this whole libor situation tries to iron itself out it's going to be very difficult to do so if we are fully in a recession where central banks and governments are forced to get involved by issuing more debt and then of course the federal reserve beginning to ease and monetize our debt directly on a big wrench in commercial banks plans so expect more of this information to come out i'm going to continue to do some investigative work on my side to better understand the interconnectedness of this financial system because it's starting to look like more and more that the lifeline of our economy happens to be the piping that has to do with this overnight lending amongst banks and if they're not lending to each other because they don't trust each other because the system is basically folding up on them as well then pretty soon we're going to have a world of a mess on our hands and it's probably unfolding right now under the scenes and we don't even know about it. So once again, hope this was informative. Definitely leave your thoughts down below. And if you are a person that's very knowledgeable in all this matters here, definitely reach out to me. I would love to get your thoughts and, and get more of an expert opinion on what's going on. So other than that, hope all is well. Enjoy your day. Thanks.